Hey guys, welcome to another rant by diggity or reflection. I should call them reflections rather than rants. A little bit early. Usually I do these on Fridays, but this one was percolating so much in my brain. I just felt like getting it out there. Uh, so where do I start with this? So you're currently in the, so people argue about uh, exact phrasing around this. Oh, there we go. Couldn't get my mouse in position, but you have kind of the, I don't know what to call it. The previous traditional era you have, you have tradition. And then you have the modern era. And the modern era is rejecting tradition. So it's like we, we find truth uh, on our own and we don't rely on tradition as a source of truth, uh, which leads us to then to postmodern potentially, conceptually, as uh, can truth even be found? Potentially rejection that truth is even a thing that is possible. Um, also, I should say that all of this, like people, I think there's still a lot of people in the traditional space. Things have moved very fast, I think, culturally. Um, but this also has put us in a mental space of um, people being in different areas here. That I, I want to contrast this with contemporary because contemporary is just where we're at now. So contemporary is we're in the midst of uh, COVID. So keep all this in mind. I think the problem with all of this is... If you look at tradition, how did tradition start? And how did it create cultural groups and things like that? And we live in a time space where it just feels like, uh, this has been on my mind a lot recently, is like groups of people and, and interactions between individuals, intera interactions with individuals of themselves, with themselves, as far as how they engage uh, in the world and entertain themselves. It's been changing so rapidly. I think Twitch Plays Pokemon was a fantastic example of this, where the game started and then it took on a life of its own and you just saw this huge metamorphosis over a very rapid uh, point in time. And so the question is, is like, okay, knowing that we no longer use tradition as like a source for like, okay, how do we do this? How do we do everyday life? How do we do social engagement? How do we do community building? Like previously it was like centuries to figure this stuff out. How did they do it in the past? Because tradition was such a strong influence. And part of it was, is there was that survival drive. So it's like, you got to survive before worrying about any of this. But anyway, so the question is, is how do we do it now? Especially with that postmodernism loom where it's like, well, is there even truth? There's a lot of subjectivity. Everybody has individual perspective. And that's That's been uh, something I've been thinking about engaging in. I think part of... A big aspect of it is, is actually, and I'm, I want to go into a metaphor, a metaphorical space, is it comes down to, I think, construction of rules more than anything for yourself, but I'm, I'll just try to stick into the social space in particular. There are rules like we're going to draw. So right here, I've got MS Paint up and I'm kind of talking over it, but drawing isn't like uh, driving. It's not dancing. It's not playing a game. I guess you could try to turn it into playing a game, but by saying like, oh, this is a space to draw. Like it creates certain rules, right? Like here's, I don't know what that is. Just came out. Random circle around it now. Now it looks like something on a car. Um, but just by creating that very light rule, there is a certain degree of form that generates. Because it's, even though it is a rule, uh, it allows something to happen. And I almost think of it a bit like uh, things on a canvas or a music Music's another good example. So part of the problem is, is if you're trying to add, this isn't a, a perfect example in this. I think music's actually a better example altogether because you have particular notes as the rules, right? Oftentimes, or sometimes scales or just that, you know, we're gonna make something sound pleasant. If you just say we're making noise, you, I don't know. Point being is, is if you, you select certain rules, it's as though it actually allows the spontaneous generation of new things. Because otherwise, oftentimes what happens is you just end up with nothingness or a lack of ability to actually be creative because of the lack of the rules. And in music space and sound space, it's if you have no rules oftentimes and just everybody's playing, especially in groups of people. So let's use groups of uh, musicians in large groups, an orchestra or a band as a metaphor for the social grouping. If everybody's just playing a bunch of notes, you oftentimes end up with something like white noise or brown noise, a cacophony. It's not until people start getting on the same page and playing, and there's obviously 
groups of that. Because if you can say, okay, you guys play this here and you guys play that, that's when music starts happening. And granted, and that's when you can start saying, oh, well, that sounds pleasant and interesting things start happening. So using that as a metaphor, how do you, how do you make it where uh, that is happening and being dynamic and creating something new and interesting is the issue? Because all, using music again as an example, all too often what ends up happening is, uh, I mean, we've seen it happen recently, is there just seems like there's too many rules on like pop music recently. And music feels like it's almost stagnated because of, I think, a survival drive, really. And maybe that's what's happening, is, is because music is in a survival space, it's been forced to just appeal to a large enough group and there's just certain rules about about like what's popular and because there's all of those rules in place it's just stifling uh, creativity so the question is is okay how do we create rules how do we create something in a group of community how do we create something uh, that allows for more creativity and more flow to happen i think in particular around the flow of emotion uh, more than anything and part of it is, is what I want to look back on is, is okay, previously in tradition, what didn't work? Or what is it, what is it in a space when someone is applying a rule to a situation in a social engagement in a community, in a Twitch chat, any place? Uh, what is it where a rule is plopped in where it creates like, po uh, bad handwriting in the midst of this. I am using MS Paint. When does it like create something that allows that creativity to flow? And when does it just stifle everything and make it just not fun anymore? And when is it there? When are there not enough rules and you just end up with just pure white noise or brown noise equivalently? And I think my conclusion upon that is a degree of what I will call uh, resistance, a resistance to flow. So think, I guess, metaphorically, think of like running water kind of flowing this way or as soon as you put an object in the way, it's you start seeing interesting stuff happening. You start seeing flow around that rock. It becomes a more interesting picture, right? The more colors you add to something, yeah, it starts, starts getting more creative. However, Eventually, if you just add too much, or if you add too much of one thing, actually that looks pretty nice, so that's a bad example. You end up with not much. This is kind of horrifying now. That works out well. And I think the distinction is, especially, is to actually, uh, to a degree, use our emotional base as a strong guide. Like, use our emotions, really, to view. Because I think we know the difference of a feeling of where someone is trying to impose something on us that doesn't allow for that creative free, uh, freedom. And when someone's trying to impose something on us that just feels like, eh, don't like this. And I think the strong aspect of this, let me give a, a core example, is that school is a great example recently. Schools, I think, one of the last bastions of tradition. I think oftentimes they're trying to just teach rote facts or try to do something that worked in the past but just doesn't work anymore. I heard someone recently, actually in a conversation on this exact thing, part of the reason it's been sticking in my brain, is like, people should be allowed to dance at school. Like, people, certain people think better when they're able to move. And I thought about that. And it's interesting because I think oftentimes when people, and this is the difference, I feel like oftentimes when people are adding a rule, it's kind of, it's a boundary. As a secondary thing, I think there are oftentimes we talk about positive emotions and negative emotions. We want more of the positive and not of the negative. I actually like to think of that as kind of the flow in the river as well, where it's kind of like you have the eddies and you just got to let it all happen. Um, but I think oftentimes when we associate negative emotions, it's because we're like fear, anger, uh, shame being the big ones. Sadness is kind of an after effect. These are kind of the, the big three. These are really associated with boundaries. Right? And you can see where these oftentimes uh, will provoke and create those rules. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Like too often we'll be like, ah, oh, that's negative and bad. And so we get, should get rid of it. But actually I think if you just allow this to happen a little bit, like interesting things can happen. Like think of a horror movie or think of uh, competitive gaming or com any competitive anything. There's a bit of anger and fear that's definitely in like competitive stuff, but it's in that safe like rule space where, and it's, 
I don't know, it's got that boundary where it's like, we're not killing anybody. And also, also, because things are on the line, shame enters in anyway. But oftentimes, at least in relationship and social community, that's, that's the vector that we try to apply, right? It's like, okay, how can we prevent the quote unquote negative emotions? To generate, in theory, positive emotions, like joy, happiness, uh, spontaneity, whatever. Is spontaneity an emotion? I don't think it is. But what I find interesting about it is, I think, it is the problem then, okay, how do we know whether the rule is, the thing we're trying to apply is good or not? And I think, this is speculation now, but I think this might be the way to apply, and let's see if I can articulate this. I'll try to use uh, potentially religion. I'll, I'll use school as an example. There is a point where someone is putting a rule out and it either has a protective aspect or it has a preservative aspect. A protective aspect is I want things to happen, right? I want creativity to, to flow. And you can see where I can say it when I'm saying like, okay, we're going to draw now. If I made that a rule for the channel, like everybody starts drawing that that's doing more of a protective thing that allows new generation to happen. However, if I go back and I'm like, you know what, let's try to, we're going to try to recreate Twitch plays Pokemon and we're going to make it hardline rules to try to recreate that experience. It's never going to work. And I think that's because it is aiming more at that preservative thing, which might have actually led to the fall of tradition to modernism in the first place. Because when it when you're in a preservation space, I think oftentimes what happens is you're trying to create these walls. You're trying to hold on to something. I think oftentimes what happens is someone had a, a fantastic emotional experience, like with Twitch Plays Pokemon or in other spaces where you have this joy, you have this uh, really euphoric thing, and then you try to cling on to it and try to hold it. And unfortunately, what happens in trying to hold it and trying to create all these rules around it, what you don't realize is like everything's stagnating now. Just realized I have a BSL tag on this. It stagnates and you end up with something that's just not fun and it just kind of has that trapped, gross feeling about it. And so I find oftentimes the best way to look at that rule is are you, like even in the protective space, are you protecting something that is even existent anymore? And I think that's the difference. So are you creating something? Are you laying down a boundary where it is going to allow uh, more growth? Or are you laying down a boundary where it is trying to protect something that may or may not even exist anymore? And I think that is why tradition had to be challenged in the first place because there are so many rules that were created for a particular point in time but life changed and life is changing incredibly rapidly right now which is why getting good at this process particularly in community in my opinion is going to be vital moving forward and i think this might be the good guideline to do it is the rule protective or is the rule preservative are you trying to defend or preserve something that a feeling like, oh, we're only gonna do this instead of just acknowledging what's there. And I think it's important actually looking back at kind of like, oh, well, negative versus positive emotions, just to allow all of the emotions to be in play. Because sometimes I think you have to have the like, yeah, this is not good anymore to just let it go and to just allow things to flow so something new can come along. And I'm hoping I don't know. I want to see that. It's weird because I feel like in the brood war community and in spaces I'm in, a lot of it is uh, the thing I've always tried to push towards. And I, I find myself running against this in particular is, is there's people that have an idea of what the game was. Not in just this community, in other spaces, they have an idea of what was. And they try to, and I think a lot of protections happen around this that end up being like, uh, like, oh, it was so much better in this thing, instead of allowing this to be like a jumping pad, to hand it over to the new thing that's coming for what is emerging. And I think what's emerging is, you know, gonna be a little sun here. 
involves us handing things off to the next generation and seeing what they do with the game and how they have fun with it. And I just feel like it just creates, I don't know, quote unquote, positive vibes altogether, even though letting go of this in aspects, regardless of what it is, uh, can be a little bit, it can be sad. It can be scary. But I think allowing those things to happen and also in this process, you know, there's gonna be anger. We're gonna have new barriers need to be laid down to uh, not to allow, I don't think, and I guess not for protection, but to say, this is what we're doing now to allow the most growth. Hopefully this was a cohesive rant, but I don't know. I've been seeing this pop up everywhere for me personally in personal interactions. I think that also is a good way of gauging, okay, is this a positive personal interaction or not? Because I think the other, there, I should also talk about the opposite side of it, where it's like, okay, you have uh, the rules or the boundaries here. This is kind of the danger on the opposite side, where it's like, we're just going to, we're not going to have any of these, right? And when that happens, it's like, there's huge potential for violation, first of all, just all the way across the board. And I think eventually, if you just get rid of everything, uh, it eventually just becomes a brown noise. And I think it's actually funny because I think more often than not, what happens is, is people are looking to introduce things to like create new boundaries, really, to disrupt the old boundaries. And uh, yeah, messes up. So I think there's a couple lessons out of this that I'm trying to convey. One is knowing that things move, knowing that things change, knowing that you can't avoid negative emotions, honestly, is what it comes down to. And if you do, you just end up with like something that just is just ultra stagnant. Like a really, if you think of it as like water, I'll switch colors, make it water. Like the water that doesn't move is stagnant. And I think that's true for the social experience as well. You gotta let it move on. But at the same time, if you're in the midst of that flow, and this is like fun and awesome, I think there's also a bit to be said for enjoying being in the moment and just letting it flow and happen. And so often I think the disruptive stagnating part is just in not acknowledging what is actually happening at present. I think what's happening at present for me is I'm realizing I'm starting to get off the rails because I don't have much more to say about this. So I think I'm gonna let this percolate and let it go Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Appreciate you guys listening.